All right, Loveland. Uh, this is Cassie here with Loveland Magazine, and I am sitting with the brand new Loveland High School football coach. Go ahead and introduce yourself for the Loveland community. I'm Andy Cruz. Obviously, you know I'm the new head coach. I'm excited to be here, definitely. Woohoo! Awesome. So, what I really want to talk about um, first and foremost is your background and what really brought you to Loveland. Um, so, growing up, I actually grew up in Anderson Township, went to Turpin High School, was very familiar with Loveland. I, in fact, my, uh, my uncle and my, my aunt still live out here. I had four cousins that graduated from Loveland High School. So, I knew you know, a good amount about Loveland. Um, and then, just as I grew up, you know, I, I still, still stayed in contact with my cousins and watched how they did in football. That was kind of cool. Um, obviously, heard about the 2013 uh, state championship. And then when this opportunity presented itself, it was like a no-brainer to me. I know Loveland's an, a terrific community with great support, wonderful uh, school district, um, thought very highly of in that regard. So um, for me to be here, sit in this seat, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm super excited. Is this your first head coach job? First head coaching okay. job. That's oh, right. Yep. So you're excited. Yep. Oh, That's yeah. awesome. Um, so did you locate to Loveland or you live somewhere in Loveland? So right now, actually, my wife and I live in Milford. Okay, um, yeah, close enough. Yeah, so actually last summer we just moved to Milford, but we were looking around at Loveland like, this is a really nice area. Oh, yeah. And then we ended up choosing Milford, but it's not far, so no. I'm happy. It's okay, good. okay, great. Love to hear that. So why football? Why are you so passionate about the game of football? Um, you know, I'm passionate about a lot of sports. I love basketball, too. I've coached basketball for four years, coached ba basketball four years, football four years. Um, I played football in college. Um, as well as in the NFL. So I know, you know, a lot about it. I know what it takes to be successful with football. Um, you know, the hard work, the preparation is just so important. And I think that's what makes me passionate because I feel like I can share that with, um, you know, the youth and really help guys get to where they want to be. And, and, and with what I'm doing now, I have a chance to get a whole program behind me and really follow me. And, and that's what gets me so excited. Awesome. Um, so I did a little research and saw you went to okay. Miami University, yeah. right? That's right. And then you, were you, did you go on to the practice squad at the NFL at first? And yeah. then you got into, so it's kind talk of a, a little bit about that. Because I was reading a little bit and I was like, wow, this yeah. guy's interesting. So I went to Miami. Uh, I was there for five years. I was redshirted. Had an awesome experience. Um, was an undrafted free agent in 2013 for the Houston Texans. Um, and with that, I actually, I didn't ever play in like a real game. It was the preseason. Okay. So the preseason, I got a lot of time and that was kind of my time to shine. And, you know, I, I did some good things, good enough at least to make the practice squad. Yeah. And I was on the practice squad for the whole season. Um, had a terrific experience. Our, our record wasn't great that year. Our coach actually got fired, Gary Kubiak. Yep, yep. But, you know, I learned a lot around a lot of amazing people, very highly successful people. And, uh, you know, I, I just learned so many things that I've, I've taken with me today. That's I mean, to even get into the NFL and go to that elite level is impressive in itself. People don't yeah. realize even just walking on and even getting on the practice squad takes a lot of effort. It was, uh, it's funny, I always tell people this. Obviously, it was highly competitive. Yes. But it's a, it's a cutthroat business. It really is. And people see it here and there. But living it, like, I remember my roommate actually got cut, like, week three, and we had a place together. I'm like, this is not good, you know? <laughs> so from, from that point on, every Tuesday and Wednesday, I kind of creep in the building making sure my stuff was still in my locker. And it was that year. That was good. <laughs> but uh, that's how it is. It's, it's very competitive, but it makes you really just try to thrive under that pressure. Right. And that was a big deal for me. Wow. That's, I just, I love that. Um, did you always want to coach football or was there something was this something that came on a little bit later in life or were, when you were younger where you're like man maybe one day I'll, I'll coach football yeah i've been asked that question recently i think growing up like i would draw plays when i was a kid like in football and basketball i just i love doing stuff like that um so growing up i was like yeah i'm gonna be a coach this is yeah. gonna be awesome yeah and then in college my major i was undecided for a little bit and early on in college when you're not playing in football it's it's a really it is a grind it's it's tough um, and then once I started playing, you know, I grew to love it. And um, I, my major was special education, so I was able to figure out, okay, I can teach and yeah. I can coach. And, and it worked out perfectly, and, you know, I've been coaching since. Is that what – are you doing special education yeah, now? Yeah, so I'll, I'll finish that up uh, at Moeller High School right now. Okay. Um, and up until, you know, we get out of school, and then I'll be at Loveland in August. And, and you'll be doing special huh? education yeah. at Loveland too? Yeah, wow. absolutely. Wow, that's great. My dad's in special education at Middletown okay. High School. Very so. cool love those kids with all my heart i mean my dad yeah. sometimes would have them come to our house and spend time with our family and just great kids um let's see here 
Um, in regards to the Loveland football program, what do you think you can bring to it? What do you think the Loveland program needs? What What's what's some of the special expertise that you think you can bring to the I program? Think, yeah, first and foremost, I think, you know, just change. I think sometimes in life you need change, and it can be tough. And I told the players that our first team meeting, change is tough, but with change brings new opportunities. Um, it's a new beginning. Right. And I think with that, you know, everyone's slate is wiped clean, and we're able to just start from ground zero and really just get after it and approach things in new ways. So I think we're starting fresh. I think there's a new fire behind football. Guys are really buying in and really having fun, just working hard. And that's what it's got to be about. I always talk about culture, and, like, that culture piece is extremely important to me. What culture are you bringing in? It's a work in progress, of course. Okay. You know, um, there's there's some things that I've put together that I really truly believe in, based off of you know my playing days, um, and as well as coaching. So I, I preach accountability. I think that starts first and foremost with me and your coaching, the coaching staff, and then hopefully that spreads throughout the team, your leaders, and so on. Um, from there, you know, I want to have a, a tight knit group. So I always preach family. Um, I think, and that doesn't just go with the players being close. I think the players should be coached close, I'm sorry, close with the coaches, and then that spreads out into the school, the athletic department, right, um, the community, and it's one love and fame. I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but no. I really believe in that. Right. I do. And then, um, you know, with that too, it's kind of, uh, I always say attitude, and people are like, attitude? That doesn't sound very good, but with attitude, it's passionate, and it's a positive attitude, as well as a team-first attitude, putting the team above yourself. Right. You know, when you can do that, we don't care who, um, you know, gets the credit, great things can happen. That's tough for high school kids, but when they truly buy in and, and let that happen, it's it's some special things can happen. Right. And the last thing, and this is what I've been preaching since day one, is to be great. Be great in everything you do. Um, I think sometimes nowadays our, our kids are happy with being average or even good. And like, you get one life, right? Like, why not go go above and beyond in all you do, whether it's out in the community, classroom, weight room, on the field. Just go be great. Go chase greatness. So that's that's yeah. kind of that culture piece that we're talking about right now. Where did you get all this passion? Who, who'd you get this from? Was there somebody that, you know, you I look know. up to? And it's probably a combination of people. I have a lot of awesome people in my life that, you know, have kind of shaped me into who I am, people I look up to, as well as coaches that I've had, players I've played with. Um, a number of people, I think, it just made me passionate and want to be a leader and, and, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Now, I know Loveland's really big on – the schooling part of everything, education. Right. Uh, a lot of the you know kids go on to do some great things in college, education-wise, mm -hmm. um, great occupations. For your program, do you require a certain GPA? You know, being a student athlete is really important. What are kind of your guidelines to even being able to participate in regards to the yeah. education standpoint? You know, there's always there's guidelines within the school. Sure. Where, you know, you have to have a certain GPA. Um, like I said earlier, we're, we're pre preaching greatness. So yeah. we want to be, you know, the leaders in the classroom, leaders around the school, sitting up front in the classrooms. And, I mean, you're a student athlete. You're a student first. That's the most important thing. Um, I think with being an athlete, you can learn important things like time management with studying and that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, like, you're a student first. You, you're in high school to get a great education and to go on and do great things after high school. Right. So, I mean, we're preaching greatness and in everything, including the classroom. Okay. I like that because that, that was always huge for me. I, uh, being a student athlete, I mean, it's huge, huge importance. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk more about the team. Uh is there experience? Are we working to get to that point? Are there some key players that you're looking at this year? Um, you know, talk a little bit about the team aspect. I know you yeah. said you're rebuilding a little bit, but right. I'm sure there's some players that you're like, hey, this person's going to really do it this year. There's a, I mean, there's some guys that are really standing out already. Right. Um, I won't name I mean, the, there's, there's a number of them, though. Um, but, you know, I think there's some there's a good blend of guys, guys that are younger, that are, you know, energetic and really excited to get their time to shine, as well as some veteran guys that have really done some good things already um, at the varsity level. So there's a good blend. The biggest thing to me is, I mean, I know these kids a little bit already. Uh -huh. I've seen some film, but I want to just see, I want to make my own judgment, get my own opinion of them. And, right. and that takes time, which is tough. I don't have like an answer like, this is the guy. This yeah, is the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That remains to be seen. You know, but I, I'm getting a close a close idea, I think, of, of who are going to be the guys this yeah. year. But there's certainly some guys that are leaders, guys that have some talent, and, you know, I'm excited about it. See, I like your outlook on that because I've asked this question before to previous coaches, and they're <laughs> like, oh, this guy, this guy. And you're like, hey, 
it's a fresh start. It is. Any, yeah. Anybody could be that guy right. or that group or anything. So that's, I really like that answer. So I'm sure you have goals, right, coming into the program. What do you see for the future of Loveland football? And then I also would like to ask, is there any kids football programs or fundraising events in the near future for the program? Well, the first thing is the mulch sale this Saturday. Um, okay, so talk about that. that's this Saturday morning. We're meeting at the high school at 930 and okay. then we're going out into the community, not just football. That's all programs, all athletic programs. Um, and they're going to be out all teams. We have designated areas and we're going to take take advantage of that and really try to sell as much mulch as we can. It's a big fundraiser for the school. Okay. Um, what was your first question? I'm sorry. No, just what are your goals for the program oh, goals, itself? Yeah. And are you, I right. know a lot of high schools have a, um, you know, kids program, right. little kid football program. Is right. there something like that in the works or anything? I think there's a number of goals I have. Um, I think being out in the community is huge. Being on youth games, youth practices, meeting with those youth coaches, um, on up into the middle school. I, I've met the middle school kids, um, the middle school football players a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but just showing my face, like I think that's important to have one. It's one big um, football program. It's not just the varsity and the JV freshman on down. It's it's one big football program. We should all have the same terminology. We should all be kind of you know working to accomplish the same thing um, with the same types of plays, culture, all of that. Okay. And then as far as goals it, for this year and beyond, you know everyone wants to say state championship, fifteen. Uh, you know those so are commercial. those are awesome goals. <laughs> yeah. um, I can't promise that obviously. Yeah. I think I'm a big believer believer in uh, the process. So with that meaning like the day-to-day -day, um, task at hand. So really working on those details, those, those small details. I think when you do that, when you focus on that process, building that culture, good things happen. The, the product kind of takes care of itself. So my goal, honestly, this season is to focus on the process and really just make sure our kids are doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're getting better on a day-to-day -day basis and we're becoming a closer and just a better football team. Okay, awesome. Um, so let's talk just a little bit. So, you know, the community understands how hard you're working. You've started, you said weightlifting and whatnot. Oh, yeah. What are we doing from there? Are we going to start doing practices? What, it, what does it all entail to get prepared for that first scrimmage or first game? Yeah, so we got a long way to go, obviously. A lot oh, of hard work yeah. in front of us. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so what we're kind of building to now is we're lifting four days a week, okay. which is a change. We were at three days a week, so we're going to four days a week. Um, and we're starting to get out into the field or really wherever space is available. We'll okay. go in the gym. We went on the tennis courts the other day just to do some agility-type work um, and start those football movements. Eventually what we'll start working to do is do um, more football movements but skill work, like position-specific skill work. That, that'll be more so... Uh, March, April, May. Okay. And then my plan, and I'm putting together a schedule right now for the summer, is obviously you have 10 camp days before camp officially begins in August, the two days. Okay. Um, so we're looking at spreading those out a little bit. I want to get after it as soon as possible in June. Oh, that's, you're excited. That, yeah, that, fir <laughs> that first week, let's get out there, right. get after it. And then there, there'll be seven more days after that. Okay. Um, but I'm excited. We have a lot of work to do, but it's it's been fun so far. When's the first game, or did you guys, is that schedule of First game yet? is Sycamore. I don't know that exact date. Okay. Obviously, it's the first Friday. Sometime. Um, in game. August is towards it the end of August okay. yeah okay. and then we have three scrimmages before that okay yeah. any uh big teams are you looking forward to playing or I mean honestly any rivalries uh, we or have a tough crazy? schedule yeah we do have a tough schedule um we open up with Sycamore then we play Lebanon two really good programs oh, yeah. those will be battles they really will be and then so the the rivalry game that you mentioned we're playing Milford weeks three and five okay. which is really unique but to me it, it's kind of a it's a cool thing because they're making that week three game like that rivalry game, the battle for the bell, they're calling it. Right. And they're hyping that up. I believe that one's at Milford. And then week five, it will be a conference game at home. Okay. Um, so I think that presents a lot of challenges in itself, playing the same team, you know, two times within two or three weeks. That's right. that's, that's tough. So it's going to be a, a tough season, tough schedule. But, you know, we'll take it day by day, like I said earlier, and, you know, we'll, we'll do the best we can. Okay. I like to hear that. Um, Last but not least, I have to ask, <laughs> what do you so far, I know I know you said you had cousins in Loveland, yeah. what do you love, hence Loveland, <laughs> love, love about yeah. Loveland, and is there any favorite spots that you like to go to, any any parts of Loveland where mm, you're like, man, question. that is that is great, or 
you know, that restaurant's great. That burger's great. Yeah. J- just something fun to let the community yeah. out there know that, hey, you know, I love Loveland and this is why. <laughs> uh, so I need to get out Loveland a lot more. I've been to Tony's and that's, okay. I mean, that's steak because I've always been like a, a Jeff Ruby precinct type of guy. Yeah. And that place is really, really good. It rivals the precinct and all those other places. Yeah. It's it's extremely good. I was impressed. So that that's probably been my favorite place. Um, as far as love and what I like most so far, I think that community piece. Everybody is close. Um, and, and just with my interviews with players, they all say that same thing. They say the closeness, not only in the community, but at the school, is just, it's unbelievable. And I felt that even since day one, all the people reaching out, congratulating me, Hey, if there's anything I do to help, I mean, it's been, it's been awesome. So I think the community piece is just terrific. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you want to share with us, you know, about the up and coming season or anything you want to tell us or the community? I mean, <laughs> you got thousands watching oh, you man. right now. Okay. A lot of pressure here. <laughs> no, I would just say come out and continue to support the team. I know Loveland is all about that, but continue to support the team. Um, they're working extremely hard um, and I, I couldn't be more excited for the season. I know the guys feel the same way. Great. Well, you've heard it first here. We're here with the Loveland head football coach, and uh, apparently we're making it to state. I don't know. (laughs) Good talking with you. All right, thank you. (laughs) You're welcome.